Okie dokie. So, this is part two of the weekly Libromancy readings for the week starting Monday, January 8th, 2018. When, when last we left off, we were talking about herbs. So we finished with Curly Doc. Now let's go to Horsetail. Horsetail, um, I don't know if you can hear that little motorboat. That's my, that's my kitty Bella. Maybe you can see her right there. That's that daddy's good Bella. Yeah, that's daddy's good Bella. Okay, enough of that. She likes to try to write messages, and she only sits on my lap when I'm at my computer. When I go somewhere else with her and try to pet her, she is not even interested. So. So, horsetail. Let's talk about horsetail. Horsetail has an association with Saturn. It's feminine in gender. It's an ancient plant that fed the dinosaurs. Uh, it's seen as a troublesome weed. Uh, so basically, here, here's a thing that used to rule the land, but now is smaller and still tries to rule the land. Uh, it's hard to get rid of. But here's the benefits. Horsetail is rich in silicon. In the past, it was used as a cleansing agent and even as like a fine sandpaper to polish metal and precious stones. How interesting. So if you have a, a mess of horsetail around your property, you could avoid having to pay for uh, sandpaper in some cases. That's very interesting. Valued by blacksmiths for giving magical strength to weapons and armor. It has uh, fungicidal and mildew, um, treats mildew and something called mint rust on black point roses. I, don't know, I got this from an article. Um, it strengthens resolve and defines boundaries. It can be used, and we were talking about that earlier in that prayer that Spirit was giving us uh, about defining our boundaries. So this is a good herb for that. Um, it helps protect one's psychic space against unwanted intrusions. In other words, any kind of, what would you call it? Psychic violation, I guess we might say. Um, from demons or spirits or anything that you don't want there. Other people trying to read your mind or put thoughts into your head. It will help against that kind of stuff. Um, it also helps make affirmations and commitments firm. It helps with contracts and such. Um, it helps clean unwanted emotional rubble and de debris from the system. So what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, emotions, attitudes stemming from uh, events and things that have happened in our lives that no longer serve us. We also have some uh, comments about snake charming. Uh, horsetail is good for snake charming, which may be real snakes or it may be a euphemism for, you know, uh, erectile dysfunction. Um, fertility, because it has relations to fertility, uh, prosperity, and the bedroom as well. And finally, it, it helps arthritis, osteoporosis, weak bladder, brittle nails and hair, chronic lung disease or CPOD, um, aging skin, weak immune system, it firms commitments and vows, it helps with bone healing, and it protects against intruders in the home. So these are all, the, like I said, the main component within horsetail that's, that's valued is, is silicon. And as we all know, Silicon Valley, that's what all our computers are made of. Our computer chips are made of silicon and different versions of silicon. So these are, this is a special crystal. I mean, it's an element, but it's also uh, can be crystallized, which occurs in the plant. So this plant holds crystals within itself. 
that will help you. Okay, next we have a type of fern, fern called the Eastern Bracken. This is uh, good for healing, rain magic, so making it rain, uh, having prophetic dreams. Uh, it can be seen as toxic sometimes. There's another herb that's very similar description. It's called sink foil, uh, C I N. Q-U-E-F-O-I-L. It's from a French word meaning five leaves. This uh, herb gives you money, protection, or it's good for money, protection, prophetic dreams, sleeping. It's useful as a charm in court or when doing business with officials. How interesting. Um, it has tiny yellow flowers. Its infusion of leaves may wash away hexes and curses. Um, it's known that fishermen in the past would make bait of boiled corn, sink foil, nettles, marjoram, and thyme blended together with uh, house leek juice. I'm not sure if house leek was a type of onion, uh, but it sounds like it probably was. And it would bring in heavier catches. So I don't know if that means that it would bring in more fish or uh, more heavier fish. Um, bigger fish. I think that's what it means is to bring in the bigger fish. It's also good for uh, it's an antispasmodic, astringent, disinfectant, tea made from the leaves, treats bowel diseases including diarrhea and also treats uh, menstrual cramping. Uh, the roots were used by Native Americans and Northern Europeans for food something like turnips and it's associated with the planets Mercury and Jupiter in the zodiac sign Virgo. So, do you see the theme there? So we've, we've got these, these things. Uh, if, if any of these are resonating with you, you have any of these conditions, I would encourage you to look into the uh, uh, plant symbolism is, is uh, one of the terms that I used. So look into plant symbolism or the spiritual meaning of any of these plants. And I'll put the names of these things in the description. Uh, I might put some links, I might not. We'll, we'll have to see. So, all right, what else do we have? All right, so let's go back to the books. So that's just the first book. Now the second book is Edgar Cayce and the Kabbalah. Um, the author is John Van Auken. And the page that uh, that it directed me to, that Spirit directed me to, was page 133. It's very interesting. This is a book about Casey, uh, Casey's prophecies, and, um, you know, specifically how, mm, about the Kabbalah, I guess, through the lens of Edgar Casey. Who's Edgar Casey? Just real quick, Edgar Casey was a well-known psychic from the 1930s. Um, who did over 14,000 prophe uh, prophecies and health readings for people um, and also brought forth the idea of past life readings. Okay. So, um, let's see. So page 133, what spirit guided me to, believe it or not, was a verse from the Bible. That, that they're quoting in here. It says, Jesus affirms this in Matthew's gospel. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, the, the children gathered around him. For I say to you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. This is Matthew 18.10. So what does this say? Well, what this is saying to me, and, and that's really what matters because as the uh, conduit, my job is to translate uh, the messages that I receive, and I can only do that if these messages are specifically directed towards me, and that's why this works. But these messages are directed towards me so that I will translate it in a way that helps people, that gives the message to people out there, like all simultaneously. It's really interesting how that works. So, um, 
the message here is has to do with children. Um, do not despise these children. Well, who are the children? The children Jesus are talking about, because, you know, as far as we know, Jesus has no children of his own. There is some information that says that maybe Jesus had children, but that's uh, it, this verse as the Bible is putting it. We, we say that Jesus had no children of his own. So these are these are street children. These are, um, you know, like the little beggars in India that come up to you when you're visiting and you look like a tourist or in Jamaica or basically anywhere where you end up in the ghetto and you're a tourist uh, or in slums, etc. Or even in in major city intersections where they'll send uh, gangs of little kids in to beg for money. Uh, he says, take care, do not despise not one of these little ones. So, these are children that are not your own children. No, they weren't Jesus' children. They were just, and they were the poor. They were the young. They were the children in mind. This is what this is what's coming to me. Spirit is bringing me that this doesn't necessarily mean children, as in small young people, uh, but children in infants in the course of enlightenment. Let's put it that way. People who have not quite awakened yet. People who are new to the idea of awakening spiritually uh, to the presence of God in all our lives and to love being the answer to everything and to unconditional love being the true expression of the true nature of God in this universe. Um, well, let's see. For I say unto you that in heaven there are angels to always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So the point of the reason this was referenced in the Casey in the in the book here was to demonstrate that even the Bible indicates that uh, each child has an angel. So we're talking about like guardian angels and stuff. So you have angels watching over you from a child through to adulthood through to death. You always have your angels. They may always be the same angels, or they may be different angels. In addition to your angels, you have spirits. Spirits, your spirit guides include anything from dead ancestors, from ancient, ancient, way back in your lineage, who you've never even met or heard of, to uh, dead ancestors, you know, people that have passed on in your life, who are important to you. People that weren't related to you that passed on in your life who were important to you. People who you connect with that as far as you know you're not related to, like for instance maybe Martin Luther King or uh, you know historical figures, George Washington's, etc. Sacagawea. Anybody. Anybody could be one of your spirit guides. Also, spirit guides can be animals. They can come in the shape of animals, like, uh, you know, wolves, bears, sheep. Um, they can be plants. They can be clovers. They can be um, the ash tree, the yew tree, which was very common in the northern Europe and, and uh, Scandinavia. Uh, oak. You know, they can be flowers like rose. They can be herbs like fennel, dill, etc. Any of these things can be a spirit guide. Um, because the idea is they're not in front of you in corporeal, physical form. Rather, they're with you in spirit. It's their energy, their spirit that is with you and is guiding you. Now, the beautiful thing about your spirit guides is they're around you all the time, 24-7. So if you have any compunction about being naked, you better get over that shit soon. Because <laughs> your guides see you naked all the time. Now, 
Another beautiful thing about your spirit guides is they will not force you to do anything. They will only answer your call. They're like a tag team. If you tag them in, then they will come in and they will do their job and they will help. But they won't do your work for you. And only on a very rare occasions where your spirit guides save you from danger. Like physically, like there have been instances where angels have been known to uh, save people from crashing their car by physically steering the car. Uh, but that's, my understanding is that those are rare occasions. More often than not, the way that your spirit guides and the angels help you is by whispering ideas into your subconscious so that you think you've had a genius idea, but really it came from spirit. Have you ever had an idea of something, a business or an invention, and you, you wanted to create, I mean, you felt like, wow, this would be a great idea. But then you had doubts and you were like, well, if it's such a great idea, somebody's probably created it already, so why bother? This is, this is not good. And let me tell you why. Because when spirit gives you these ideas, these are answers to your money issues. <laughs> you were worried about money or how you're going to do this or how you're going to do that. And spirit gave you an idea and you didn't recognize it as such. This is your prayer. This is the answer to your prayer. So we need to all be more open to understanding spirit communication. And as some of you out there might be like, oh, I was told by my pastor or, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, talking to spirits is against the Bible, etc. Well, maybe, maybe not. But let me pose this question to you. Did not God say that all his children had to do was to ask him and he would give the answer? Did not Jesus say, ask and you shall receive? Look some of that stuff up. Um, I'll do a video on that in the future on prayer and what it really means, etc. So moving on. Uh, so this is a verse in the Bible that demonstrates that angels are real and that we do have guardian angels and that they do watch over us. And what he says is they have all they always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. So the Father, uh, you know, is God. So the angels that watch over us also know and have direct communication with God on a face-to-face -face basis. So when we communicate with angels, which is an ancient, ancient word meaning messenger. These are the messengers that God sends to give us information. Angels try to talk to us in a language that's as close to ours as possible. So if you're getting messages and it sounds like it's your own voice, or whatever, that may still be the angels because that may be the only way that you can handle it. I believe in fairies and gnomes and, you know, elves and mermaids and stuff. And it's bothered me for a couple years since I since I've realized that I believed in them. That I know, that I can't ever see them. And I don't say, oh, why can't I ever see them? I try to think positively, and I, I say, you know, I did a, a experiment a couple times where I was like, I I easily see angels and fairies everywhere, where they truly are in my life and you know it didn't work so the interesting thing is for the most part most of the things that I've tried work I don't think I can see the dead and ghosts and stuff normally because it would scare me I think I'm not ready for it yet I need to get more secure in my practice and in myself before I'm ready to see ghosts and um, fairies and stuff like that. Okay, moving on. 
Oh, it's also important to note that that verse is Matthew 18.10. Well, today is January 8th, 2018. If you write it out um, in shorthand, it's, you know, 118, or sorry, 1818, which is 1818. There's two repeating numbers. That's a very powerful, uh, numerologically speaking, but what Spirit has shown me is that I need to mention to be especially, um, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but this has something to do with the, um, let's see, 1810. So it's the 10th of this month. I know, like it doesn't really make sense. You might think, oh, well, maybe that means the 18th of October. Well, it might mean that too. But they're pointing this out to me in my translation as the 10th of this month of 28 of 2018 of um, something on January 10th I don't know what's going to happen on January 10th but it has to do with children in some sense it may have to do with okay the last thing I want to say about this is another way that you can think of the children is ignorance the ignorant people the people that don't know that they don't know um, the best way that you can bring the the message to them of enlightenment and spirituality etc uh, and their true nature of love and is through compassion the spirit of compassion and unconditional love This is what God, this is the message that I have, uh, that God has given me to share uh, in my spiritual revelation. Okay. The last thing that I want to talk about relates from my own personal journals. The Spirit showed me this to point out to you guys. Um, it has to do with sex. Uh, more so along the lines of companionship. Spirit wants you to know this is not the time, and actually it's never the time, to force your will on anybody else, especially in a romantic or sexual situation. Um, <clears throat> That's rape at its strongest and at its weakest. It's it's called violation of personal space. We never want to violate anyone. Violation is one of the ultimate sins. You always want to honor other people's free will as long as it doesn't violate your free will. This is the live and let live uh, philosophy. Uh, and this is the bare minimum of how you want to live life. If nobody messes with you, then you don't mess with them. Now, that's not the optimal life. The optimal life is you actively go out and, and do good things for people. And you don't preach. You don't say, uh, do this and do that, and this is how you should be, and this is how you shouldn't be. What you do is you demonstrate this is what me and my wife uh, have been trying to do and have been doing successfully um, to some degree, to some significant degree for the past two and a half years since we met and got together, uh, is we try to be the examples of compassion and unconditional love in everything we do. And it's easy because we're good people. All right. So yes, beware of in your a lot of you are wondering what's going on in your romantic life. Does he love me? Doesn't he love me? Some of you out there watching this are are men and you're like you know, you've got a woman you're looking at and you're like, does she love me? Doesn't she love me? And you were brought up a sissy boy because you didn't have a dad in the household. And I know this may 
This may come as a shock to some of you, but it's been proven that no matter how good a woman tries to raise a little boy, that little boy is either going to end up a psycho or a wussy. Somebody who doesn't have the strength of character to um, be a man, essentially. We'll have a video later on that will discuss the difference between um, divine masculine and weak masculine. Weak masculine, in a nutshell, is where, uh, as a man, your your insecurities, your insecurities and your fears, cause you to react with anger and violence instead of just being somebody who can figure things out without violence. Like I said, that'll be for a video in the future. All right. This week, if you have to go without sex, then go without sex. Don't, don't try to force sex onto anybody. If you're married and your husband or wife doesn't feel like having sex this week, let that be okay. This is a week where you can know that this person still loves you. They just, something's not resonating. Maybe their body is changing and there's no sex this week. Don't force yourself on, on anybody, even if it's your spouse. Okay. That's the end of the reading. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you want more like this, uh, be sure to comment below, like, and subscribe. I look forward to reading your comments, and uh, have a blessed day.